I want to dig a little deeper into this uh, number now with Jay Bryson. He is acting chief economist at Wells Fargo. Good morning and good to have you, Jay. Uh, so you just heard Emily break down the jobless claims for us. Do you believe that we've we've hit the peak number of initial jobless claims during this pandemic? Well, so you know, initial job. So the, the peak number, yes, I think we've already hit it for this uh, at least this go around. Um, you know, if the pandemic comes back later on, you know, who knows? But we should continue to see that that number coming down. I think what's going to become more important, though, as we go forward is not necessarily the initial jobless claims. It's the continuing claims. It's the people who continue to file for unemployment insurance. And, and as as the economy starts to reopen in different sorts of states, you should start to see that number starting to come down if people are getting called back to jobs. If that doesn't come down, that's a worrying development. Jay, do you think the economy, the U.S. economy has bottomed? You know, I'm, I'm parsing some of these earnings calls this week, and uh, I've, I've been seeing specifically within restaurant companies, sales growth has started to improve in, in the first couple of weeks of April. Yeah, I would think that we are probably close to a bottom now. Now, you know, the, the GDP number that's going to be reported in the second quarter is going to be awful just because of the air pocket that we fell into in early April. But as you know, again, states are slowly starting to reopen. And if you think of, a, a, a say, a restaurant that closed, it, it can't close twice. Um, and so, you know, going forward, it may not be back to 100 percent capacity anytime soon, but it's going to go from zero to 40 percent or, you know, whatever it is. And so, yeah, we should start to see some economic activity slowly start to pick up. But again, when they do the GDP numbers for the second quarter, it's going to be an awful number. Yeah, that everybody can agree on that one, Jay. You know, you said uh, about the Fed meeting yesterday that the Fed, quote, stated the obvious, promising to stay aggressive. When you look at these numbers, these jobless claim numbers combined with GDP numbers, things are going to these numbers are going to get only worse in the second quarter. What needs to happen on the fiscal side here to give Americans and small businesses more assistance, do you think? I don't know if there's anything necessarily on the on the, the, the side of households and businesses at this point. I mean, maybe they tweak a little bit more PPP loans. Maybe the Fed uh, starts to do more of its Main Street lending sort of thing. But I think the big thing that that probably needs to be done and is being debated right now in Washington is any sort of aid to the state and the local governments. You know, these guys, unlike the federal government, have to balance their budgets. And their tax revenues are getting crushed right now. So if they have to turn around and really cut spending, that's going to delay the recovery. And so that's a big political fight that's going on inside Washington right now. Uh, but if there's anything that needs to be done at this point, it's potential more aid for the state and the local governments. Jay, I've been trying to figure out all week. Uh, this week alone, we've seen big increases in the personal savings rate. In the data this morning, personal savings hit 13.1 percent. That's astronomical. When do you think, do you think it's peaked and when does that begin to loosen up a bit? I don't know if it's necessarily peaked, but you always see this happen during recessions. But if you go back to the what's been known up to this point as the Great Recession back in 2008, 2009, it, it certainly spiked. You know, when people, when things become really uncertain, people just, they their precautionary need to save goes up. They just buckle down in terms of, of their spending. Uh, as the economy starts to slowly reopen and, and as people maybe start to feel a little bit more confident, we should start to see that savings rate come down. But it's not going to move you know, dramatically down. I think it's only going to, to, to creep lower as we go forward. You know, Jay, I'm looking at stock futures under a little bit of pressure, but the trend as of late has been a rising market. There seems to be this conundrum of a rising market in a shrinking economy. Are investors just not on the same page here with, with the rest with the larger economy? And why do you think we're seeing this? Well, I mean, keep in mind, obviously, the stock market is always forward looking. There's a lot of bad news that's already been discounted right now. And so what I think the market is doing right now is starting to discount more positive sort of um, um, news. I mean, the, the news that's come out recently is about more and more states starting to reopen, uh, restrictions being uh, brought down a little bit. And so, you know, I think that's how what's happening with this, the stock market right now. Now, if we go forward from here and we start to see cases start to go back up again and start to put more lockdowns in place, I think the market would react negatively, negatively to that.
You know, I was also reading recently that there are a lot of new accounts being opened at a pretty quick uh, clip with some of the brokerage uh, firms, meaning that people are looking at this market and trying to capitalize on the volatility by day trading. We haven't talked about day trading as a phenomenon in quite some time. Are you concerned that we might see a resurgence in day traders and what might the implications be for investors? Well, I mean, for, as a macroeconomist, I'm not really all that worried about day trading per se. I mean, you know, can individuals get wiped out if they get on the wrong side of a trade? Yes. Is that going to have major implications for the economy? Probably not. And even, you know, in terms of, of, of you know, markets, um, you know, big institutional investors with millions and billions of dollars to spend are, are, are really uh, what moves markets there. So I'm not, you know, as, again, as a macroeconomist, I'm not overly concerned about you know, day trading. But um, I think maybe if you're a market strategist, it may have some uh, some implications there. All right. We're going to leave it there. Jay Bryson, acting chief economist at Wells Fargo. We thank you for your time today and, and be well, Jay. Thanks, Alexis. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.